How do you know you're going to heaven? Ladies and gentlemen, it's Nicholas Renner here with a video on Do I know I'm going to heaven? Well, it is a good thing you clicked on here because the fact that you worried about it, the fact that you want to know if you were going to heaven or not shows your faith. It shows that the Bible the Bible says that many, many call upon God. They say, Lord, Lord. Haven't I prophesied in your name? Haven't I cast out many demons in your name? And the Lord says, I have not known you. I don't know you. Get away from me, you workers of iniquity. So what does that mean? That means many people are going to think that they're going to heaven, but are actually going to hell. Ladies and gentlemen, in this video, I'm going to be going over that question. Okay, I ponder this many times myself. And what does it mean? What does it mean? Am I going to heaven? What does it mean if I'm not going to heaven? So let's get into it. So we all know that Jesus is king. You have to follow Jesus. You have to follow his commandments because he that picks up his cross, he that endures to the end shall be saved. So you got to believe with all your heart that Jesus was born, died on the cross and rose again. But we need to follow his commandments. So many, there's many people out there that are living the, Fer, the Pharisee lifestyle, okay? They're living the lifestyle that is, I'm going to church on Sundays, then I'm going to drink on Monday. I'm going to smoke on Tuesday. I'm going to do all these things five days out of the week and go to church on Sunday, devote, devote one day or such a little bit of time to God on one day thinking that, oh, I'm going to go to heaven that God is going to forgive me because I'm a good person. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says nobody's good but God. There was only one that was good, and that was Jesus Christ. He died on the cross to redeem us of our sins. Okay, So why did he, why did he die on the cross? He died on the cross because that was what God promised ever since Genesis, that he would send a redeemer, that he would send a savior to redeem us of our sins. Okay, because by the law of Moses, we've all sinned. Okay, by the Ten Commandments, you've you, you might have lied. So since we are born in the sinful state because of Adam and Eve, each one of us has sinned. There's not one of us. There's not one of you watching today that hasn't sinned. You might have lied. You might have cheated. You might have stolen. You committed lust. So if you look at a woman with lust. You committed adultery in your heart. The same goes for women. If, you, if you're a woman and you're looking at a man with lust, you're committing adultery in your heart even if you didn't do anything sexually. So you, out of all the Ten Commandments, you've broken one of those Ten Commandments in your life. And if you've broken one of those Ten Commandments, then you're, you're, you're deserving to go to hell. Because say if you cheated, you've lied, you've committed adultery in your heart. You're a lying, fornicating, adulterer, and you might have you might have had such anger in your heart that it's almost as good as murder. Okay, so you're a murdering, adultering, lying, thieving person that's that's worthy of being sent to hellfire. So what did Jesus do? He came to fulfill that. He became the sacrifice. So instead of having to sacrifice all these animals, like in the Old Testament, instead of having to shed the blood, because the power of life and death is within the blood. So what does that mean? So Abraham, when he was about to sacrifice his son, God stopped him because he was testing his faith. But he said, "I'm going to send. I'm going to send a sacrifice." Okay, and that was Jesus, a spotless lamb without blemish. So instead of having to sacrifice all these animals, he sent one that was good for all the sins to come. That's as good, that's a spotless lamb, that's a perfect, his blood was pure. There was no sin amongst him, but he took all the sin. That cross became all the sins of the whole entire world to come. He became guilty for everything. He took it all upon himself, okay? So you ask yourself, am I going to heaven? Well, the fact that you're on this video is a good sign because... You're questioning yourself. So when you're a Christian, you're always trying to be, you're always trying to strive to do better. Okay, you're always trying to strive to be like Jesus. Okay, 
the point is to strive for perfection, but we always fall short. But that's the point. That's why he died on the cross to redeem us, to save us, and to keep us from hellfire. Because when God the Father looks at Jesus, he looks at the perfect sacrifice. He looks at a sinless life. Instead of looking at us, these lying, these cheating, these murderous, these adulterers that are deserving a hellfire that if God's looking at us, we're going to be burned away. We're going to be we're going to be turned into ashes because God is perfect. But when he's looking at Jesus, he's seeing that perfect lamb that died for us that didn't commit a sin. Okay, we're all like Barabbas. We're all like Barabbas that deserved to be put in jail and deserved to be put to death. But Jesus was the one that took that. So we're like Barabbas. Jesus took that onto himself. Took that punishment that Barabbas deserved. Took it upon himself. And redeemed all of us. So when you have a fine, when, you, when you've done something, so we're like Barabbas. We took, he took Barabbas' death penalty took it upon himself we're like barabbas we're those murderous we're those adultering we're those lying thieving individuals that deserve what barabbas deserved but instead of barabbas getting it jesus got it and jesus didn't deserve a single thing like that when those men were on the cross one of them was trying to mock jesus the other one was like do you not fear god don't you fear god this man's done nothing wrong He's done nothing wrong. And he turned to God and he asked, Will you see me? Will you not forget me? And, he, and Jesus told him, I'll see you in paradise. So that's infinitely, infinitely powerful right there. That is power. His blood, so powerful, it absolves all the sins to come. Because he didn't commit a single sin because he was God manifest in the flesh. So what you need to do is the Bible set lays it out. Okay? You need to pick up your cross. You need to live for God. If he's called you to preach, preach. If he's called you to minister to your friends, to your buddies. Because the Bible says, if you deny me before my father, then I will deny if then I will deny you if you deny me before men then i will deny me i will deny you before my father so don't be ashamed of the gospel you can't be ashamed of it you can't be ashamed of jesus you can't be ashamed of the guy that came in took that death penalty took that fine you're speeding you're going 100 miles per hour you killed somebody because you were drinking and this person that had nothing to do with it had nothing doesn't deserve it comes in and puts it on himself that's taking that penalty for you even though you deserved it all because you believe in him you pick up that cross you follow him you do what's hard because he that endures to the end shall be saved so you need to endure to the end you need to pick up your cross you need to repent every time you do wrong you need to ask god to make you a better man or a better woman pray to him without ceasing the bible says pray without ceasing fast when you can praying and fasting go together you need to constantly stay in the word constantly stay in the bible okay constantly stay in this because this book will keep you away from sin and sin will keep you away from this book and that's that's you cannot be emphasized any more than that but ladies and gentlemen these these are the things i'm going to lay it out here again for you how do you know if you're going to heaven you need to pray to god you need to, to cross-examine your whole entire life. What are you doing? The fact that you're watching this video means it's good. It means you're asking those questions. So how do I know I'm going to heaven? Well, do you have faith in God? Do you believe that He rose again? Do you believe that He died for your sins and lived a perfect life, died for your sins, for your sins to be absolved? So you believe that. You believe He is King and He is the Son of God. You're worshiping him. You're not worshiping him just on Sundays. You're carrying your cross every single day, every time, everywhere you can. You're not denying him. And you're going to endure to the end. And you're going to be saved. 
okay, and you're following his commandments. You're not mouth professing. You're not saying I'm a Christian and living, doing something else. Repentance means stopping the things you're doing. If you're vaping, if you're smoking, if you're watching those sites, if you're doing whatever it is, you need to repent. If you did it yesterday, okay. If you did it today, okay. Stop doing it, okay? We all fall short. We need to re repent. The pig falls into the mud, wallows in the mud. The lamb, the sheep, falls in the mud, gets out, and gets cleaned up. Doesn't want to go back there. Doesn't want to go back to that area. Ladies and gentlemen, I need you to like, comment, and subscribe if this message touched you, if God spoke to you through this message. Ladies and gentlemen, I love you all. And let me leave this prayer for you. Dear Lord, watch over every single person that is watching this video. May they be saved. May they repent, come to you, whatever struggle, whatever strife they are going through, that you will uphold them through your righteous hand, that you will comfort them through any struggle, through any strife they may have. And they may be going through, if they have depressions, if they have anxiety, cure them of this anxiety. Make sure that they stay with you through all the days of their life. Lord, amen. I will see you on the next one, ladies and gentlemen.